A while back, I wanted a specific machine and when I saw it on sale, I found every way possible to get it. I was tired of scrolling through Instagram and YouTube, seeing creators use lasers and CNCs to level up their work, while I was stuck not being able to provide my customers with customization for their projects. Today, I'm gonna to talk about two amazing tools that every maker or DIYer should use or have to stand out ahead of others selling products in this market. A laser engraver and a CNC machine. But which one should you buy first? I'm gonna start with the one that I feel has the lowest cost of entry, not necessarily from price, but from a time to value approach. Laser engravers are an essential tool for any maker who wants to add a unique and personal touch to their projects. The possibilities for creating personalized and detailed designs are endless with a laser engraver. But is the laser engraver the first upgrade you should make or is it a CNC? I'm gonna let you know which one I bought when I first got started with these machines and the answer may surprise you. But first, let's talk about laser engravers. There are lots of different types of laser engravers from diode to CO2 to fiber lasers. Recently, there have been some upgrades to diode lasers that put them very close to the capabilities of CO2 lasers. But the main difference is that diode lasers use a semiconductor diode at the head of the machine and the CO2 lasers use a laser tube that's filled with gases where the electric current flows through the tube and that's how it does its engraving. Fiber lasers are also an entirely different category and lots of makers use fiber lasers to engrave metals. For comparison's sake, I'm going to be covering CO2 laser category uh, in this comparison as it's one of the most common in this space. One of the best things about CO2 lasers is they are incredibly easy to use. Even if you have no prior experience with design software, most laser engravers come with user-friendly software that allows you to create and upload designs easily. In addition to being easy to use, laser engravers also are very versatile. You can cut a lot of different materials, including wood, acrylic, leather, uh, and even metal. This means that you can create a wide variety of projects with just one machine. You can buy materials that are ready to engrave and cut without having to do any of the prep work ahead of time, which means that you can literally set up your laser engraver and get to work by making custom projects right away. You don't need any of those fancy woodworking tools like a table saw or bandsaw. You can just get started and you can make something make a cool project with the laser engraver right away. And so the laser engraver may be the choice for you. I often buy acrylic in small quantities in the colors that I want so I don't have to invest a lot of money in the materials to do small jobs. One source for acrylic that I use is Makerstock. I'm not affiliated with them, but I'll leave a link to them and some Amazon links in the description for everything that I talk about in this video. Makerstock also has a selection of plywood, leather, and other materials that you can buy in small quantities that will be perfect for your laser engraver. There are tons of creative solutions that you can use from the materials you source to the designs that you can download and use. You just buy the material and get right to work. Once you have the machine and the materials, you can go to an open source and download a few designs to get you started. There are downloadable designs that you can purchase on Etsy uh, or other websites, but you can also find a large selection of free designs like these available on the Ohmtech website. From day one, you can start engraving and cutting ornaments, earrings, uh, wine caddies, so you can start earning money right away. These projects can sell for between $10 and $30 each, and once you subtract out the material costs, you can earn between $5 and $25 per piece. That's a 50 to 80% margin. One of the most popular projects using laser engravers is custom wood signs. With a laser engraver, you can easily engrave your favorite quotes, song lyrics, or sayings onto wooden boards and plaques. We've all seen those signs, uh, they'll say blessed or gather or home sweet home. This is a sign that I made for our half bath. After posting them for sale, I sold them for over $100 each. That's roughly $75 in profit every time I sell one of these signs. These custom signs make a great addition to any room, even if it is 
in the bathroom. And they're a hit on Etsy if you're looking to sell. You can use laser engravers to create special cutting boards or charcuterie, um, shark cheese boards. And even though you engrave a design on your charcuterie board, you can still use it as a cutting surface. And let's be real, once you make a nice cutting board, nobody is actually going to use it to cut on, especially if it's grandma's recipe, but it looks awesome. A standard walnut cutting board on my website is about $108 without engraving, but what really sets this product apart is by offering customization. And that adds another $25 to $40 to the price of the board. That's around a 25, 30% margin increase on every sale. Most everyone is looking for cutting boards that are customized or you have customized options. So once you do the personalization, you instantly become an option for potential buyers. Finally, laser engravers are also great at creating custom coasters with a variety of different materials, whether that's on slate, ceramic, or cork. Who wouldn't want a cork coaster with your face on it? A set of custom coasters can sell between 30 and $40 and I buy these blanks from Amazon for 45 cents each. So just think about the options if you're able to engrave a business logo on coasters for a boardroom or office. If you're looking at buying a laser engraver, I made a video that you should definitely watch before you buy. I'll link uh, to that video at the end of this video. Let me know in the comments if you are team laser. Team laser. So here's how I would stack up a laser on my unique and never before seen analysis that no maker has ever done before, nobody. So from a cost perspective, I know it's gonna vary, but roughly you're looking at between $1,500 to $9,000. It's very easy to use, the software is easy to use, the setup is easy and quick, the maintenance costs are low, you'll have to pay for some bulbs, replacement bulbs at some point, and the startup on it is fairly fast. Remember when I said I would let you know which machine I bought first? Well, the answer is, well, actually, let me talk about CNC's first because the answer is unusual. Maybe you already have a laser engraver and want a little more functionality to do some 3D work or make deeper cuts. This tool is perfect for creating complex or detailed designs that would be difficult to do by hand. A CNC uses a design file to cut or engrave materials like wooden plastics, like the laser, but it can also cut composites and foam, which you can't do on a laser. Some materials are caustic if you laser cut them, which is one of the reasons why I use my CNC for those types of projects. One downside to the CNC over the laser is the cost of entry. Because you'll likely need to prep the materials ahead of time, you'll want to have a few general tools like a table saw, track saw, or circular saw. You can get by with hand tools in most cases, but that just takes longer and the reason why I'm talking about CNCs is to make your job easier and not harder. There are materials you can buy for the CNC like you can with the laser, but most often I'm milling or cutting down materials before I put them on the CNC because they're generally custom materials. Another cost of entry for this type of machine is the CNC uses different router bits to cut and shape the wood. Not only will you need various types of bits, which I'll talk about in a minute, the bits will wear over time and will need to be replaced. So there are some ongoing costs to owning a CNC that many don't consider when getting into this market. Unlike the laser, you can't just buy the machine and get started cutting right away out of the box. You need bits to get started. But there are some great uses for a CNC, so let's find out some of the projects that you can make with your own new tool. One popular use of this machine is for creating signs. You may be asking yourself, but Matt, I thought that I could use the laser engraver to create signs. Well, that's true, but this machine can generally make deeper cuts than the laser engraver, and a standard CO2 laser can cut up to quarter inch or half inch material, but it does leave the charred black edge. So if you want to cut deeper than a half inch and avoid that black edge, the CNC may be your tool of choice. I make a lot of signs using a product called HDU. This material is fantastic for outdoor signs because it's weather resistant and will not warp like wood. HDU cannot be laser engraved, so if you're looking to make signs like this, you'll want a CNC to get it done. Because HDU is expensive, a lot of people aren't currently offering this type of product, 
but the margins are fantastic because the upsell is how clean the finished look is and how long it will last. I make signs from HDU running between $700 and $1,500 with an average margin of between 60 and 70%. Now, the learning curve for a CNC is slightly higher than a laser, mainly because you're dealing with depths of cuts and different tool paths. Remember when I said that you're gonna be investing in router bits? Well, the great thing about CNCs is that you can make some unique cuts because of the various types of bits that you're gonna be using. There are thousands of CNC bits you can use and looking through the Amana or any other router bit catalog can be overwhelming. There are plenty of videos, groups, and resources that will help you through the CNC learning curve, but two of the main categories of bits that you're gonna use most often are V-bits and end mill bits. To put it simply, you can use V-bits for things like engraving letters and logos with tight corners, and then you're gonna use end mill bits to cut and shape the wood. Depending on the size of your machine, you can create everything from small projects to cabinets or furniture. The CNC that I have can cut up to 26 inches by 42 inches, so I won't be doing large scale furniture or cabinets, uh, but it can save me a ton of time and it does save me a ton of time on batching out smaller projects. With a CNC, you can make shop jigs and unique parts. While you can use a laser to make jigs and templates, Doing this on my CNC has been my favorite function and has allowed me to make other, spend my time on other projects while it does the mundane tasks. I use the CNC to make cutouts that I would otherwise have to do with a drill bit and skill saw. And since I'm not great with a skill saw and cutting circles, I use the CNC when making these cornhole boards I had the robot do all of the work to perfectly line up and cut the holes. By using the CNC to do this repetitive task, I maximized my time constructing the frames while the tops were being done on the CNC. If you're doing a few of these projects a month, the time saved really translates to dollars and high margin. Because every shop is different, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly how much margin is in it for you as you incorporate a CNC. But in general, this machine has allowed me to do projects that I would otherwise not be able to do by hand. I can pop a cutting board on the CNC to flatten it while I go and prep another cutting board or batch out another batch of cutting boards. So essentially I have an employee in the shop that doesn't need a coffee break or vacation time. So how does the CNC stack up on my value chart? For CNCs, they're fairly easy to use, but I put them in the medium category and the software can take some learning. So I put that in medium category. The setup is fairly easy, but the costs of ongoing purchases of the bits and maintenance that is in the mid range category. Eventually I got a larger CNC for signs and cutting boards, but before I had those independent tools, I had something else. Sometimes you can get a CNC with a laser engraver attachment. What? Now, most of the time, the laser modules that come with these machines have a much smaller diode, which isn't great for deep engraving. That's okay for the most part because you already have the tool for cutting with the CNC, but I found the smaller diode didn't produce as good of a quality engraving as a dedicated CO2 laser, and it took an incredibly long time to engrave. The integrated machine I had was the Piranha FX CNC with a tiny two watt diode laser attachment. So engraving a board that now takes five minutes used to take between 20 and 30 minutes. The main reason I sold it was because of the footprint of the machine. I couldn't even put a cutting board between the gantry for engraving. So while I could use both the laser and cutting functions of the machine, it was just too small for my needs to scale my business to what it is today. There are larger machines that have a diode laser attachment, but that's not the route that I decided to go because I wanted a dedicated CNC and laser. I quickly decided to upgrade to the dedicated laser and then get a larger CNC. These two tools are perfect for anyone who loves to create and wants to take their projects to the next level. So which one is right for you? It primarily depends on your skill level and budget, but also how fast you wanna get going on the types of projects that you're wanting to get into. If you're interested in getting your hands on these machines, be sure to do your research and find the machine that's right for you. 
There are many different options available on the market, ranging from affordable desktop machines to high-end industrial grade machines. Take a look at the projects that you wanna do and figure out which machine can handle 90% of your projects. Thinking about the startup costs, the time, and your ongoing costs like replacement bits or laser tubes. And always, I recommend getting the machine one size bigger than you think you'll need because you'll quickly outgrow it. The challenge is now trying to convince your wife that size does matter. Like I mentioned before, if you wanna know more about laser engravers and what you should consider when you're ready to buy, click on this video right here.